Good afternoon, Chancellor John Dornbush, Vice Chancellor Geraldine McKenzie, other distinguished guests, family, friends, and of course, my fellow graduates. Congratulations to you all for being here today. Every one of us has faced a whole host of hardships, sacrificed greatly, and consumed exorbitant quantities of caffeine to get to this point. We're here due to a combination of grit, hard work, late nights, and support and encouragement from loved ones. So, before I even get started, thank you to the parents, grandparents, partners, children, friends, and family for their love and support. Thank you to the understanding bosses and work colleagues for giving time off and covering while we were away. And thank you to the patient lecturers and tutors, especially those with an open door policy, some of whom may have regretted having such a policy by end of semester. All of these people and many more have been what has kept us going and pushed us in the right direction. So on behalf of the graduates here today, thank you. In the interest of there being afternoon tea served soon, I'll try and keep this short and sweet. My name is Kira O'Sullivan, and what an honour it is to represent this cohort as valedictorian. My story thus far is somewhat straightforward. In grade 12, I was offered a scholarship to go to USQ and study environmental engineering. I accepted and moved on to residential colleges, spending the last four years living, working, studying, and looking after the welfare of 80-odd young adults all under one roof. Doing all four in one place came with significant challenges and the learning curves were very steep, but these were undoubtedly the best four years of my life. I'd started university like all green, optimistic and ridiculously eager first years. Uh, I was and still am very passionate about the environment. I remember thinking, at the end of these four years, I'll understand all the intricacies of climate change pollution and growing resource scarcity, and I'll have figured out the most practical way to tackle it all. I'll be able to discuss my opinions on these issues and add, trust me, I know these things. I'm an engineer at the end. <laughs> but I was so very wrong. Only now do I truly understand what Einstein meant when he said, the more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. And standing here in front of you all today, I can confirm I do not know many things. This was further validated about a month ago during my graduate induction. We were introduced to something called the 70-20-10 rule. So for those like me who hadn't heard of it, it's the idea that 70% of your learning comes from hands-on, on-the-job experience, 20% comes from the people around you, and the final 10% comes from formal education and learning. This is your degree, our trainer had pointed out. And to be frank, I was fairly livid to think that the thing I just spent the last four years of my life on and will continue to pay off for many years to come was worth 10% of my usable knowledge. But thinking about all the things that I don't know and what I have ahead of me, it made perfect sense. So today I'd like to just touch on five things that make up that 10% bracket for me. Number one, the most invaluable resource we have as engineers are those around us. Our university mates, our colleagues, lecturers, tutors, I've turned to others for help countless times and vice versa. So always maintain uh, and grow this network. Do that thing for someone that you said that you would and try not to burn any bridges. You never know who you'll need to turn to. Number two, I learned how to trust my gut and listen to it. If I found a person, situation, job, project didn't feel right, it's because it wasn't. Whether it be standing up when I didn't agree with something or simply stepping away from a person I didn't see as a positive influence, I found it was always better to act sooner rather than later. As engineers and surveyors, we're all likely to face a number of ethical dilemmas and meet thousands of people during our careers and lifetimes. And for these reasons, I think it's extremely important to be able to trust our intuition, our instincts, and know when to act upon them. Number three, I quickly learned how to navigate the waters of long caffeine fueled late nights and still give off the vague illusion that I was a somewhat functional human being the following day. I'm sure this will come in handy as there are no doubt big nights at work and study ahead for all of us. Number four, we're all human and at our core we're all just winging it. It was Charles Darwin who once wrote in his diary, but I am very poorly today and very stupid and hate everybody and everything. So even the very best of us have those awful days. We're just human, that's okay. Number five, finally, resilience. 
in the wise, wise words of Australia's true hero, living legend, and most celebrated bush poet, Russell Coit. <laughs> Everything you plan doesn't always go to plan. <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> now, I'm not sure if resilience is a land skill, but university pushed me in ways I didn't think I could handle. But each time, I found I had more resilience than I ever thought. One example is that until second year, I did not know that if necessary, I can summon my last three remaining brain cells at 2 a.m. and find a missing semicolon in a few hundred lines of MATLAB code. Now I know, very handy. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Andrew. <laughs> um, so those are my top five. And no doubt each graduate here today would have a different list, as we're all incredibly unique and at different stages of our learning. Four years later, I realised university was never truly just about learning the technical skills. It was about moulding our way of thinking, learning the soft skills, and building up a toolbox, if you will, full of resources to tackle the problems ahead. I've also realised that I can't simply tackle what is arguably humanity's greatest problem with sheer will, passion, and an engineering degree, but I'm still optimistic. We have to be. As engineers, we'll solve these problems because it's what we do, and it's what we do best. So now I'm rather glad that it's a split of 70, 20, 10. I've concluded that university is the necessary 10%. It's that 10 that sets us up so we can take in the remaining 90. And congratulations, we've all checked the 10% box today. So whichever path you decide to take and whatever problems you decide to tackle, go forth from today, work hard, and most of all, good luck with your 90. Thank you. Thank you.